<laughs> Welcome everybody to this evening's uh, broadcast of Very Float Upstream number seven. Here with our awesome little cast and crew, we have Blaze, editor in chief over at Crackberry.com, and Alex Bass of Cyberbytes Inc. My name is James. Let's get started. First thing I want to talk about is a uh, Android runtime update that we uh, got coming through for BlackBerry 10 devices. Any of you guys pick up this uh, update on your devices? I didn't actually have to because I went the roundabout way of doing it a long time ago when the problem was initially found out. So I just loaded up the two bar files that were needed from the previous Android runtime and did it that way. Plus I can't download the, the new update anyway, which seems to be problematic for people. So. Is is BlackBerry World like down or like what's the issue with trying to get well, it? Well here's the thing, I don't I don't actually know what the real scenario is because some people can use BlackBerry World the you know, perfectly fine, and then others, you know, they get network errors and stuff like that. On my passport, uh, Silver Edition, I get errors, but I have another passport with me where BlackBerry World works perfectly fine, right? Um, but I do know that BlackBerry is aware of it and trying to actually figure it out so that everybody can, uh, you know, get back on track with being able to download it, but uh, it doesn't seem as though that it, it's an easy problem to actually go ahead and, and fully address because not everybody is experiencing the exact same problem, right? It's it's one of those problems for me at this point that's like so ironic because they they have an Android device. So like having having <laughs> runtime issues is just such a funny thing because the real answer to that problem long term is is this priv, you know? So it's yeah. it's very interesting. At least they're trying to get that update out there for those users. It's a really weird issue. I didn't really find myself uninstalling Android applications too much on BB ten to be honest. It's kinda let them be for the most yeah, part. I mean, so, for the most part, most people shouldn't really be experiencing it unless they actually, you know, go ahead and have a problem with an Android app. But, you know, once you once you actually start on installing Android apps and trying to reinstall them, that's when it becomes, uh, you know, a problem. Which, you know, not everybody is essentially going to experience that problem, but it does exist. It is a real problem. So. And, you know, there's a host of other ones as well that some of their forthcoming updates like 10.3.1 and the like are going to come and hopefully patch up and, and get users back. Uh, when What time were we looking to pilot 10.3.1? I mean, at this point, I can imagine it coming maybe before summertime at this point. I mean, like Mobile World Congress, is that a time to bring it out or sometime after? You mean 10.3.3? Yeah, 10.3.3. <laughs> you said oh, 10. Yeah, you I was did, like, wait yeah, a minute, yeah. what? <laughs> yeah, flash of the past. Yeah, 10.3.1. No, 10.3.3, excuse me. <laughs> well, um, I don't know. It's probably not Mobile World Congress, basically, because nobody should be expecting the, uh, the actual update until March anyways. That was always the time frame that they pegged for it. They, they specifically went out of their way to say March, so... Um, yeah. I don't feel like they need a specific day to do it. Like what? I mean, these these are like security improvements and stuff like that. Why? Like why? It's not like this big overhaul of any reason. So why make a big deal? Like Mobile World Con Congress, I feel like that would be more of a big deal. Yeah, um, um, just doesn't seem necessary. Yeah, it's really not when it comes down to that. Unless they want to basically show that they're still supporting BlackBerry 10 and deliver right. that message. But, yeah. And I know, think that's something they they should value. I mean, what are you going to bring to a Mobile World Congress? Otherwise, you know, more Android stuff and, you know, further that rift between some of the BlackBerry 10 fans that are still out there and, you know, the new users who are coming to your platform. It's a tough yeah. place for them uh, to, to kind of try to navigate because they need to show growth in one and also show kind of stability in the other. So more more juggling for them. <laughs> it's, it's funny. We get this Android runtime update, and then we also get a new developer area inside BlackBerry World for, you know, some of those great apps on BlackBerry, which, again, it's kind of amusing because we just had a program that basically highlighted this, you know, right on the application. What do you yeah, guys think of them of adding this into BlackBerry world? Well, I mean, with the Build for BlackBerry program basically shut down at this point, I, I kind of don't understand the initiative behind it because yeah. what, was so, what was so pressing about the Build for BlackBerry program that they had to go ahead and shut it down that, you know, they have to basically go ahead and create a list in BlackBerry world, like... It just seems like they, they right. recreated the exact same situation. I don't understand where where the difference is between what what the Built for BlackBerry program was doing and what this actual program does. It's kind of kind of a little weird scenario because at that point you still have people, 
you know, submitting their apps. You still have people on the other end, I mean, on the BlackBerry end, basically reviewing the apps. So why even bother shutting down the Built for BlackBerry program? It seemed like an, it, more so now than ever before. It seemed like it was an unnecessary announcement to actually go ahead and put out to the public. You might as well have just said, hey, you know, this is what we're doing with the Built for BlackBerry program now. We're, we're basically just going to create a nice list within BlackBerry world. It just... It seems like uh, you know the information was put out there for not very much reason. <laughs> yeah, the only difference I see right now is that they listed in addition to obviously being built uh, Black Pretend native and everything is they have in there have a minimum three star rating. Um, that's something I don't recall ever being a thing for built for BlackBerry. But it's like, hey, you could if if that was like solely the reason behind it. You could have just added that stipulation on afterwards or, you know, remove Built for BlackBerry for people who didn't. You know, it just seems strange. Yeah, it's like Here's literally my, they made another one. Here's my theory on it, guys, and it's it's, it's a long one. No, just kidding. It's not that long. <laughs> Built for BlackBerry as a brand for them, I think extended beyond applications. I believe they had a alliance partnership program with uh, OEM accessory manufacturers. Oh, yeah. Built for BlackBerry as well, so I wonder if discontinuing Built for BlackBerry is a way for them to kind of dismantle the brand that that's that created for them with some of their partners as well. I don't know because they didn't even mention any of that in there. Like it just, I don't know. It seems like a secondary segment of the Built for BlackBerry program stuff, like away from apps. My theory, it, it I don't know how how plausible it is because really I only thought about it within the last ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Um, is basically because, you know, when you go through some of the, the Built for BlackBerry apps, like a lot of them, they were built and they were created and they were submitted and approved long ago, right? Yeah. Um, realistically, a lot of those apps don't even work anymore. When you download them, you know, they're like, they just don't work. So the in hindsight, the BlackBerry, the Built for BlackBerry designation should be taken away from them because they simply don't work. In theory, uh, it should have been though. Like you, in order to maintain your Built for BlackBerry certification, it needs to work on every single new device they release, and that was yeah. one of the qualifications. I guess I, I, the question is, have people actually lost their Built for BlackBerry because their their app doesn't work so well on? <laughs> Everyone new... did so. <laughs> yeah. So to me, it's kind of like maybe they're doing a little bit of house cleaning on the on the BlackBerry yeah. world side because everybody who submits their apps to this list presumably will have a working app. So, you know, they're going to go in, they're going to test those apps, make sure that they actually work. And these are the apps that they're going to go ahead and present to people. And the built for BlackBerry designation just sort of like disappears. But you end up with this nice curated list of apps that actually do work versus the possibility of highlighting an app that essentially no longer works. You know, maybe it worked six months ago, but the developer never updated it in, in such a long period of time that it just doesn't work anymore, and rightfully, it doesn't actually deserve that bill for BlackBerry designation. So maybe it's a maybe it's a, a form of housekeeping to be able to go ahead and clean up BlackBerry World a bit. Yeah. I thought it was cool that, you know, Brian over at, you know, BB World actually went ahead and decided to do that because that was based off user feedback, which I think is awesome that they were listening to the, the, the built for BlackBerry kind of pushback developers were giving. So it is cool that, that that area of BlackBerry World was opened up. I think a lot of the developers appreciate being put on the carousel, being put on some of those front end, uh, you know, well advertised places of BlackBerry World, and this is a way to to basically accomplish the same thing built for BlackBerry did to a degree. So, you know, I, I, despite our theories, Blaze, it seems to be a uh, Pretty good thing. Hopefully, Brian can keep up with all the demand because I'm sure is I'm sure the email is going to get slammed with a bunch of BlackBerry developers like Alex. When I'm doing it right now as we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. That's awesome. You got you were just recently in the carousel, Alex, right? Isn't that was what, I? Isn't I can't get to BlackBerry World anymore. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Was I? Part of life. <laughs> uh... You can still get to BlackBerry World. You just have to send yourself in the browser over there, which. Admittedly, isn't the best experience. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, you know, it's one of those things, and I do definitely agree with Blaze, where his point about really the developers not having updated some of their applications and the designated meaning something different than it used to is uh, yeah. a fair point. But you know, 
things move on, we get more apps and more announcements coming on multiple platforms nowadays. So a new one we had was Quicktail or Mini being updated with BBM mobile payments kind of integrated. It's funny because I think we were laughing about this kind of like last week when we were talking about yeah. the video. Or maybe in, in one of our groups or something like that. And uh, <laughs> just interesting that this news was a lo launched like back in December, I believe the press release went out, or like November quite a while ago. And now we're just getting some kind of like marketing push behind it. So yeah. it's kind of just odd timing. It, and it seems like we're getting a lot of that in the news these days, just some odd timing of announcements. And, and we'll get to more of that a little bit later. But what do you guys think about Quick Teller? Uh, this news coming out and BlackBerry doing a small little video for their YouTube, kind of showing off the feature for that demographic. I don't know. I've I've been using PayPal. I I know that this isn't even necessarily for like U.S. markets and things, but I've been using PayPal with friends, the PayPal integration, everything, and it's been working well. Um, and I guess I don't really have much to speak on this because I don't think its primary purpose is for U.S., which is the market I'm in. Not so. for Nigeria. Yeah. Basically, nobody nobody can actually download it within the U.S. and actually use it. So. I just wonder what the benefit of it is. Like, they're not getting a, a, a cut of the, you know, transfer of the money. So aside from just saying, you know, BBM, download BBM so we can send money back and forth, that's just another reason to download it. Other than that... Yeah, it's um, definitely one of those one of those value-add things for sure. It, I mean, the only real benefit between this and something like I'd say PayPal is the, the airtime top-up that you can do. So, you know, you could get more minutes and more texts and things like that just really easily as you need them as opposed to just, you know, paying a different, you know, a monthly plan or anything like that. Just a really, like, a different kind of mobile demographic in those regions. So it's nice, at least for Nigeria, that they have something like this. And it is available, you know, with, um, you know, Google Play and, and in the App Store as well for uh, for Quick Teller. So I definitely think it's probably going to make that application just a little bit more sticky. Just like PayPal makes it a little bit more sticky for us. Just another venue, and I hope BlackBerry keeps doing little partnerships like that. It can be valuable for them is if they built more of a kind of platform of payment behind BBM. Yeah, I mean, one of the biggest things was that when we put the post up, everybody was like, "Well, doesn't doesn't this already work for PayPal?" Well, yeah, it does, but PayPal doesn't necessarily work in Nigeria, so you know, it, it's basically just catered to the Nigerian market. So it's something something that they've created with you know, the whole payment system platform to be able to go ahead and integrate these solutions that are based on regions themselves. So, you know, where where U.S. and Canada and so on and so forth has PayPal, Nigeria has uh, has a quick teller to be able to go ahead and make use of. And, you know, it, it's it's not something to, to totally be ignored either because of the fact that, you know, it it does, uh, it does uh, expand the platform itself, and hopefully, like James said, it, it makes BBM a little bit more sticky for those people that are there. <laughs> when your BBM is sticky, you need to clean your device. No. <laughs> <laughs> so we got Quick Teller Mini update that came through. It, this is probably the most exciting piece of news that I wanted to talk about. Um, coming up next, we had BlackBerry offering Priv and Passport discounts through February 24th. Now, I know for us, probably not that exciting. But I know a lot of people who have been on the fence of a BlackBerry Priv purchase specifically, and they've been waiting for a discount, but they've been looking for, like, what's my actual venue to get this as cheap as I can direct from BlackBerry? So this is a, the kind of promotion that works really well. Um, giving a BlackBerry Priv as a would be amazing, just so you know. Giving, giving a, a lady friend of yours a BlackBerry Priv for Valentine's Day would be an awesome idea. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> you might land in a heap of trouble. <laughs> As long as your finances are not tied together, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I was going to make a, a Kelly joke, but I won't. Oh, my I wonder God. if this is the February pricing drop that everybody got hyped up. Yeah, I mean, 50 bucks is, <laughs> is, is something, right? It's better than nothing. And especially if it's kind of like just at the far end of where you want to be, it kind of covers the tax for where you'd end up, and it's not a, not a bad discount. Um, we've seen, I think, BlackBerry selling passports for like three ninety nine, four hundred, and these are all you know packaged bundles as well. So you get some cases, and some other things. Alex, would you consider picking up one of these devices had you the money just kind of lying around? And if you did, I mean, what would you use it for? Like, I know right now you could technically use a passport. Like, is a passport something you'd want to like go back and investigate? Hmm. I mean, I had a passport, but I, I sold it to Jubei, 
actually. Um, but that was because I couldn't use it. Now that I'm actually on AT&T, ironically, I could use it. Um, I just think at this point in time, it's really difficult because I rely on a lot of the apps. So I, I think it would just sit here. Um, I, I don't know. And then as for another passport or another priv, I don't really see why I would need two privs. I'm not like you. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a jerk. <laughs> One of those privs gets beat up quite a bit. It's like my, my tosser. <laughs> Literally tosser, but... Um, yeah. It's the one you see in all the pictures that's being tossed around in the air. <laughs> up close, it has chips out of it. <laughs> some scratches, some, some paint flakes that are coming off. Some areas that I thought were uh, were solid plastic and definitely aren't. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think these kinds of promotions are something BlackBerry should do more and make them less of a period of time. I think people might make a lot of, like, kind of quick decisions and, and jump on one of these devices if there's a really good discount for a short period of time. So moving inventory in a more kind of methodical pace, so to speak, as opposed to these wait, 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 and then have a period where there's just kind of an uptick on sales. It'd be interesting if they controlled their inventory and, and focus some of these promotions a little bit more. But regardless, I mean, a BlackBerry Passport right now for $399, like the original model is pretty good price, especially for a brand new one. Although you could probably find some used ones out there pretty pretty cheaply as well. Uh, Blaze, for you, do you think these kinds of promotions are, are beneficial for BlackBerry? Do you think they really move the needle in terms of sales? I don't know. I mean, it depends on the actual amount that they drop. I mean, $50... I don't know if fifty dollars is enough to sway the majority of people, but I know I know from reading the comments and stuff on the actual sales posts that we put up that there, you know, it really was enough to to sway at least a few people. Um, I just don't know if fifty dollars sways enough people to be able to go ahead and and say, yeah, it was it was beneficial to go ahead and put this on sale. I mean, I don't know. If it was me, I, I, I mean, that's the only basis of analysis that I have is for if it was me, I'd probably do it because of the fact that $50 co basically covers taxes. Um, um, considering I'm from Nova Scotia, our taxes are a little bit higher, so I'd probably jump on it and just chalk it up and say, yeah, well, you know, I got free shipping, my taxes were paid for, so that's all good. It, you got, you got the cake and the other things as well, you know? There's yeah. There's a lot of cost kind of built in there, I think, which is yeah. a, a good thing. You know, I really hope people do really consider, some, you know, the, the priv as a device, even if it's something, you know, you might not stick with long term. I think at least give yourself the, the benefit of the doubt, give the device the benefit of the doubt to go out and try it because it is a really, really different experience from what you get on BlackBerry 10. But it does, as, as Alex has attested to on many of these podcasts, really open the door for a wider ecosystem of apps for you to connect to. You know, I, I found this this app for my camera the other day like I've had this Wi-Fi camera for years now it seems and you know I was able to find some app that worked for it you know to to wirelessly access the files without ha having to you know pull out an SD card or anything like that and you know I keep finding those small small things happening more and more on Priv and you know I go back to like the keyboard and some of those other things and it really is a, a nice device but but damn, I wish it ran BlackBerry 10 too. <laughs> I'm still on the fence. Like if they if there was a, like a BlackBerry 10 priv trade up offer, I would seriously seriously consider that. And Alex is probably like shaking his head on the inside. <laughs> but uh, you know, BlackBerry 10 is where it's at, even though it's not. <laughs> That's a way to explain it. It's just it sucks because, honestly, at the end of the day, you want to love BlackBerry 10 and continue supporting it. But BlackBerry is not showing the love and support like it really needs, you know? Yeah. So it is it is pretty tough to, to consider things where they're going right now. You know, I look at the whole year as we're headed here into 2016, and I wonder how they're going to hit their hardware target with, with Priv alone. And it really yeah. kind of gets me open, like, is another device the answer to that problem, or... Lower, you know? I mean, a lower end device, which is what I mean, what rumors or whatever this is going to be, and it should be a lower end device with the keyboard. And I think that will check off the list for uh, a decent number of people, people who may have. But I, I feel like okay, it's tough because the premium field. If you want a premium device, then the answer is get a priv. If you want a premium device with a physical keyboard, that's the priv. But a lot of people who are even in the premium market are saying it's too expensive. So, okay, they're going to make a cheaper cost option. So I guess the biggest question is, like, when you're on R4 slash Android, these aren't people necessarily looking for a cheap phone. 
So if they kind of gear this physical keyboard cheap Android phone is is that, will like where's the target market? Um, maybe this is for like not for the U.S. This focus for this next device. Maybe it could get those sales numbers. Maybe it could it could literally be the the huge blow up device that they need. Maybe just not in the U.S. Yeah, and they've run into that predicament before though, where they thought that they had a home run with some cheap end, cheap lower end devices, and but it's never been Android. Yeah, true. that's true. That's true. That's like, I mean, how many? How many? There's 1.7 billion Android phones out there, and you know, the U.S. only accounts for probably 300 million of them because some people probably have two phones and things like that or whatever. So, like, we're talking about 1.3, 1.4, 1.5 billion people in the rest of the world, aside from the U.S., who are probably buying cheaper Android phones. So, what if they did make a, a cheap Android BlackBerry phone that? may be what some people are looking for, or what they've been holding out for. Here's one of those things that, that BlackBerry's always bothered me in the last couple of years, and it, it ties back to what Alex is saying here about a lower-end device, but it seems like they're, they're so hesitant to put devices into market because they don't know how they'll do with their current landscape that it's, it seems like it takes forever to get them to test the waters on certain things, right? Like the Leap device is a great example where they did Z3 and then we saw the Leap kind of manifest itself months and months and months later uh, to ter- basically accomplish the sim- a similar function, right? I totally agree with Alex. I think Android on the low end on a BlackBerry piece of hardware would do well for them in a lot of their emerging markets because a lot of those markets have, are a lot more mature from where BlackBerry was with BBOS in them. So... It's it's all about recapturing some of where they've been. So I really do hope you know an Android device is something like a Vienna or something of that nature could really really kind of drive some numbers for them this year. But again, it's tough. I mean, if if they were to launch a device, let's say mid year that was lower end Android, uh, excuse me, lower end hardware running Android, you know, when would sales for that really manifest? You know, yeah. So it's it's tough to say how you're going to hit your hardware mark. As they, you know, you literally fold into the next uh, next fiscal year here. Uh, Blaze, do you have any thoughts on, you know, that specifically in terms of you know what BlackBerry might do on a lower end type of device? Because you know, John Chen's been really kind of he wants to stray away from low end as much as possible, as yeah. if it's a this really saturated market where there's so many other players, and that's something they really need to consider even in the mid tier, right? So, is it worth it for them to try another device? I mean. And what does that mean for their hardware and, and the rest? I think it's in in those emerging markets that they've they've you know had popularity. I think it makes sense. Um, you know, when especially when we saw the the prices come out for Priv in India and stuff like that, there was a lot of a lot of people who just simply wouldn't even give it a look. Um, the most recent one was, I guess, Nigeria, where people were like, "That's insane! Like, why would I buy that?" Um, so yeah, I think in those emerging markets, there's there's at least some room there to be able to go ahead and put out a lower end or you know happy medium device that would be able to go ahead and attract people back to the BlackBerry brand, especially if it was Android. But you know, in the in the grand scale, I don't think I don't think BlackBerry should. I agree with Chen basically. Like he shouldn't chase after the the low end market to be able to go ahead and compete on that level. Mm-hmm. However, it does it does make sense in those emerging market areas like uh, India and stuff like that to be able to go ahead and, and push something out. Um, my my only problem with that is, is as soon as they do it, then you know it becomes the spectacle of Blackberries basically pushing out low end devices again, no matter no matter who who they actually market it to. You know the U.S. News flow will still get a hold of it and still say that you know BlackBerry put out this crappy cheap device or whatever, um, even though it was never, you know, essentially intended for the U.S. market. That's that's what the news cycle will end up saying. You know, they did that with the Z3 as well. You know, they they bagged on the Z3 when it came out, but it was never even a device that was meant for the U.S. market. And, yeah. No, it, it's That's questionable. True. They did bag on the Z3 hard, right? The like they really did for pretty much no reason. Like, it's yeah, just, it's, just it's the like way that you have to go out of your way to even get the Z3. Why are you talking about it? Right, exactly. <laughs> um, I don't know. It, it it also worries me that there's there's so much competition in the low end market as well. Like you can buy 
you can buy an Android device for like 150 bucks. It's on the cheap end of the scale, running some MediaTek chips and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That you know, it, it. I I don't have the numbers to be able to say whether or not it would be beneficial. However, in terms of sales sales numbers, I think it would actually help because you know it it basically puts the BlackBerry brand out there and it gets people attracted to it and. No, if it helps those sales numbers at the end of the day, then it's obviously something that they should be doing. But again, apparently Chen has all the numbers and he can look at them and determine whether or not it would be a good thing to do. Um, and thus far, he's he's decided no, we're not going to chase the low end. So I don't know. We'll see how it, how it comes out. I mean, I think I think it's part of that as well. I think Chen's at a place where he's he's kind of like. There's value in our security, whether you would want to admit it or not, right? As an end user, there is value. So it's it's putting a price on that that is not menial, right? To make because it's it's not a commodity. Security isn't, you know. So it's something they really need to to create a little bit of a pocket of value in, and that needs to be seen on their hardware side because that's one of their unique differentiators, right? I you know I do see a lot of low end Androids. I don't see many that have a keyboard, and if BlackBerry can literally just own that small niche with a lower end. Or even a mid-tier Q top, you know, Q5 type device. I think I think they could make something work for them. Because for specifically, I mean, that piece of hardware that was leaked out of on Crackberry, the Vienna, that looked pretty promising. Because for me, I've always wanted a portrait QWERTY device. Like there was something about the square form factor with the classic, the Q10, the Passport, that you wanted it to just be a little bit taller to match with some of the the applications that you'd use. Because there would be small areas that you know obviously wouldn't necessarily scale to that one to one ratio, so if they were able to deliver like a four by three, sixteen by nine type experience on a QWERTY, they're gonna have a nice little candy bar, and I think that's one of their form factors that's that's gonna last for them. Whereas you know the classic type form factor has been pretty good for them as well, and it's more of like an evolution of something like that. Uh, yeah. Alex, if if something like that were to come, do you think it's gonna have like the touch enabled keyboard? Like, is it gonna be that middle of the road, or is it gonna be a, a step back more, you know, in line with like the classic for cost purposes? I feel like probably one of the biggest mistakes they would be to make would be to not have that, you know, that innovation in it because there are some Android devices that have physical keyboards. They're just not very good. So it's like you kind of, I feel like you need those to be in all devices moving forward, especially. It's it's to not fragment the market right. in addition. Don't, don't, because don't like, do an Apple, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like okay, here's your physical keyboard variant that has you know these touch capabilities, and here's a model without it. It's like you know uh, here's a camera variant and and one that doesn't have a camera. Just like don't deal with that shit. That's like another SKU uh, that you just need to have as a product line. It's like unnecessary. So I want, like I do wonder how expensive it is to you know build that keyboard, but hey, look at their their manufacturer. Um, they've probably got it down pat. Like they probably already took all the learning curves when it comes to building that type of keyboard, and they've probably got the the numbers down where it's not that expensive to add their touch capability innovations over or not. So I just think it would be a mistake for them to to ignore that and remove it. Then at the same time, it's also like, I don't know, it's kind of like a selling point on some of the other devices. You know what I mean? You can pay the extra money and get this feature. I don't know how that works out in in the consumer's eyes. Yeah, but I if that was like an if they are identical devices, like I mean, because I like personally, I want like the sliding mechanism and everything like that. If there's a candy bar with an always out physical keyboard, that's not. I'm not in that market anyway. Like, I'm not going to make that decision based on, oh, I want a touch-sensitive keyboard, so I'm going to go with the Priv instead. Yeah. It's just I, either you're in the market of always having a physical keyboard there or having a slide out. And I think that's more so what people will make the decision on. But that definitely makes sense, though. BlackBerry's talked, and Chen specifically has talked a lot about like underserved areas of the market. And it's funny because it's like you were the only one in the market serving that <laughs> that area. Yeah. So it's it's funny that they're trying to attack a space that basically they've receded from themselves, right? Because as they've tried to transition to the software play, I'm yeah. I'm interested in seeing if they can accomplish a mid to high end 
device and, and sell people on it because I think there's a there's a marketing issue there as well when it comes to this this kind of middle of the road like the classic is not a a low end device but it has a you know a rather mid to high end cost at least when it first launched I think it was like about four seventy five five hundred bucks which is you know not a not a nominal cost so if they can toe the line and, and figure out you know learn from some of their other devices like the Q10 like the classic and really nail a sweet spot on this device I think it can go far but again they need to put some value in the security the encryption and, and everything else BlackBerry is doing on that Android because it's not a normal Android I mean are they gonna learn though because like this is literally the thing it there's it, there's always a cost thing that comes down to it where where people are complaining about costs in some way shape or form when you hear about a BlackBerry so is there anything that like will they ever learn or I feel like if, if they do reduce the cost enough then, like right now, they probably feel like, well, we're we're in Apple category right now, where they can charge premium because they have this premium product. They don't want to be competing in the Android market, ironically, is which is where they're competing. But they don't want to be the manufacturer that makes a tiny margin on their phones. They would rather make a large margin like Apple, yet compete in the Android. And I don't know if they can do that, but I don't know if they'll ever, you know, just just go and reduce their pricing. Because that's essentially them accepting that we're just another Android player, and I don't think they want to be just another Android player, even though they kind of are. Yeah, it's it's really really weird and ironic right now. <laughs> I just think back to the days where we were like, you know, talking so much crap about Android and how unsecure and all this other crap, <laughs> and now we're here, you know, totally eating the words that Chen's put in our mouth. But uh, <laughs> it's it's been an interesting kind of ride as they go through. We were talking a little. Yeah, go I ahead, please. Honestly, don't. I honestly don't think BlackBerry has a, a full laid out map as of yet. Like everybody always refers to the roadmaps. Honestly, I don't think that they have one right now. Seriously, like I genuinely do not think that they have one. They're playing by the numbers right now. They're seeing what happens and they're taking on in all of the feedback. And basically that's it. They may have a few devices in the labs that they're testing and and basically say, "Yeah, okay." If the numbers work out, this is going to be something that we're going to roll with. But nothing has been laid out in concrete as of yet. I truly don't think that BlackBerry has like a 110% concrete map at this point that they can actually refer to. They're just sitting back. They're looking at the numbers. They're seeing how proof plays out. They're seeing how the BlackBerry 10 sales that they have are playing out. And basically going from there because it... You know, at, <clears throat> we've all seen the pictures of the Vienna, but the Vienna hasn't actually appeared anywhere else. But at the same time, neither has any other device. You know what I mean? We're at that point now where if there was another device that was essentially on tap from BlackBerry, the chances are it would have been leaked out at some point, right? Like, at, right now, you know, as, historically when one device gets released, the other is really only two or three months behind from being leaked, you know? So when the priv showed up, we basically had a two or three month window where there should have been the rise of another device that appeared. And thus far, there hasn't been any devices that have been leaked out. So it really does, did, did, did BlackBerry tighten their security so much to the point that there are no other devices being leaked out? Or do they just genuinely not have any other devices to, that have reached the point of, you know, a full-blown production yeah. status? It's you know funny. what I mean? It's so funny be, that you mention that because if we look at, again, historically, BlackBerry leaked the slider themselves at Mobile World yeah. Congress, you know? So it's like maybe they do have it kind of locked down to, to a degree or, like, you know, there's just so few people actually hands-on on that stuff at this point that until the whole full execution plan goes in, you know they're not going to make a move on it, as you said. It's right. really, really interesting. You know, you have watchdogs. You have so many other things that you could definitely be locking down a lot of this stuff, and and you know controlling and understanding where it's going, some of the information. So, you know, it's very interesting. And again, it brings me back to the whole dilemma: is this device necessary if they were to launch something like the Vienna? Like, is it? Is it an inclination that they're going to continue trying, or is it something that's actually going to be a viable kind of? A, you know, SKU for them, as Alex mentioned a little, a little earlier ago. Really tough, and, you know, timing is one of those things here that is going to be important for them. 
uh, as we head toward the close of quarter here, I believe it closes on the 29th um, of this month. Um, we're going to see some more news hopefully coming to talk about why the earnings are going to be what they are. I'm hoping that the earnings continues to uptick, but we've seen some interesting kind of licensing agreements on the patent side of things. They could potentially be pulling in some money. Both of these deals that we're about to discuss were actually closed back in November of 2015, right around the time Priv launched. Um, so really interesting, both Canon and IGT announcing a, a patent licensing deal covering, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but it's uh, charging, charging capabilities on mobile devices. Yeah. I'm trying to pull up the... Pull up the, the niceties right now, but pretty well, interesting. That's the thing. There's not a whole lot of niceties to actually discuss because none of the details are out there. But I mean, IGT is obviously, um, if anybody has has taken the time to go ahead and look at them, they're actually uh, they build basically video gambling machines and so on and so forth. So uh, you know, when you go to Vegas, a lot of that stuff is powered by IGT. They even have offices within Vegas and. Canon, of course, everybody knows what Canon does. Um, cameras, printers, whatever, fax machines, <laughs> all that stuff. Uh, it's interesting that Tire, the piracy of weaponry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I think the biggest thing here is, you know, that BlackBerry. Uh, you know, early on, John Chen said that he was basically going to go ahead and put some of those patents that BlackBerry has been holding to actual use. Um, and this is these two agreements are basically spot on with that that comment that he made about you know utilizing those forty four thousand patents that have kind of just been sitting around um, for the longest time. You know that when people referred to BlackBerry's patents, they they referred to that as one of their their main strongholds and why the company was worth even what it is today, right? Uh, but BlackBerry ha has never genuinely gone out and actually like. You know, quote unquote, became a patent troll and actually enforced a lot of those things. They they have to a certain point, but not to any great capacity. But now these deals are coming up, and they're they're actually starting to uh, make use of the patents. So it'll be interesting to see how many more of these deals come up. And mm -hmm. it, I, for me, I guess the biggest one is, and uh, given that it, it came on on Friday, I haven't had the opportunity to go ahead and and dig deeper into it, but I'm, I'm actually really interested into uh, what patents that BlackBerry has on charging solutions because right. I, wasn't, I wasn't even aware that they actually had any like patents. Like, where did these patents come from? Um, you know, was it was it part of the Rockstar acquisition of patents that they all banded together or and purchased or you know, is there going to be other players that are making you know, the exact same agreements with these organizations because of that? Or is this solely a BlackBerry patent that they've had for years and never actually utilized? It's uh, definitely definitely worth looking into to find out how much how much charging solution patents they actually do have. It's very interesting. And again, just the timing of this coming out as we're heading toward earnings is pe peculiar to say the least because it seems, you know, obviously... If these deals do inquire, because I believe the IGT press release mentions like a royalty as part of the patent licensing, which I can imagine a similar deal was probably struck with Canon, although you know Canon and them have worked previously in the past. Um, really, really interesting to see what kind of numbers this is going to help put on for them in the years to come. You know, yeah. as as more of these relationships continue, you know, like like I know their patent portfolio is one of the youngest in the industry as well. So really seems vital for them to try to start monetizing aspects of the business like this. And, you know, there's a lot more. The thing is, you know, BlackBerry has a lot of patents. And, you know, specific to the quote-unquote ch certain power-charging technologies that are used in some of these products, BlackBerry has a lot of other things that potentially they can start, you know, enforcing a little bit more strongly. But, again, you don't want to be a patent troll either, right? So I'm hoping they're coming to reasonable agreements on these things so that they can build and collaborate further. Alex, what do you think in terms of the earnings, uh, in terms of, you know, the kind of odd placement of some of these press releases? What do you think BlackBerry's focus is right now in terms of the IP and licensing? I, I, I think just along with focusing their software, um, what they can do with software and IP and license, licensing kind of 
in a way, it, it's I, I guess it's a recurring. I think they're looking for a recurring revenue stream. Software is definitely going to be that. Um, IP and licensing is always kind of going to be one of those routes too. And I think, I mean, look at Google. They're paying Apple. Oh, and my phone just went out because they heard me say Google. I didn't say okay, Google. Anyway, uh, <laughs> now I'm thrown off with that damn you phone. Uh, it's it's funny because Google is watching upstream here <laughs> and it's listening to upstream there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, Google is paying one billion dollars a year to Apple to be the default search engine on Apple. So like, and that's kind of like a licensing thing. So you look at all these high up companies and they have some licensing deals going on here and there. So I think to be successful, you do need to have various license agreements and things going on, but I, I just don't know. They never seem to be the bulk of the business, so I think it might just be like a little bit, you know, just to continue cash flow and make it so they don't have to lay off, you know, Jerry and, and the janitor or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You know, it's funny as well as you kind of look at where BlackBerry is going to be heading here in the next couple of weeks. We are going to have Mobile World Congress sooner rather than later, and I'm interested to see what the kind of vibe is going to be like. I know that there was a recent interview from Chen at one of the uh, one of these IT symposiums, things like that, uh, talking about IoT, and he seemed really, really upbeat and positive and talking about BlackBerry, maybe a little bit more confident in where Perv is and where the company's headed. So, you know, I have a good feeling as we head into this earnings, I think they're going to beat expectations again, maybe by a small margin, as they did last quarter, but at least beat the street expectations for in terms of where the stock is actually going to land out for them. Uh, Alex, do you have any predilections about where BlackBerry's going to head as this quarter comes to a close? Oh, I feel like the only way they can go, don't quote me on this. <laughs> I feel like the, the only way they can go is up at this point. Like, if you look at their stock right now, they're at $6.68. Actually, I'm, I got to stop, but I bought another, like, 30, or sorry, 15 or 30 shares. Not very much, but um, I was just like, damn, this is getting so cheap. But then again, I keep buying it. It goes down, so maybe I'm just being an idiot. Um but so what does that actually make the market cap? Three point five four billion dollars. That's not a lot of money for a market cap. And we're but we're also in a really bad market right now. So I think this almost has less control over how their earnings are in terms of like what their share price is gonna do and more so what the hell's going on with China and what's going on with oil and you know. I, one day it might boost up right after earnings, and then it'll be right back down, just because literally everything is down right now. So yeah, it's a bad time for the stock market, man. Yeah, yeah. The struggle, the, is it, the struggle is the struggle is international. As, yeah, S and P is down like eight percent this year. Like this is, I think this is the worst it's ever been. It's February, you know, and we're already down eight percent on the top five hundred companies. You know, so Alex, we'll see. Alex, did you see Deadpool? No, I want to though. I'm totally, you know. Right. I, you I might, mentioned you recently. The after shows, Blaze and I are definitely getting into it. Oh. <laughs> Damn. Alex, like, darn. Save anyway. it for the save it for the end of of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll we'll do like we'll, like we do with the Avengers. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, that was that was Star Wars. That was Star Wars. I still I still haven't seen Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, you're not missing much. So I wanted to say a big thank you to our Patreon subscribers and supporters. Alex and I are repping our Patreon shirts that you guys got for us. Uh, Marco designed these ones for us. I'm going to link on Alex here so you can see his as he pops his shoulders around. It's, I'm not going to lie. I got so many compliments about this day. Good. No, That's I good. actually I was wearing a sweatshirt all day. But <laughs> it's, it's oh because it's so it is so cold out today. I was I was honestly going to. Yeah, I'm cold in Florida. Out, so I don't but imagine, you know where you yeah, are. It's, it's pretty really bad, man. My car didn't even start the other day. Four times it took it took a fifth time for it to start off. It's just been cold. Mm -hmm. You need to get those little heat hand warmers and like put them on your engine. And yeah, <laughs> might help. Yeah. Why does Blaze never have these kinds of uh, problems like my car didn't start? No, he never, never. <laughs> Number Does one, I don't have a car. I don't need a car. <laughs> See? That's, that's why. <laughs> I have no car to complain about. So. Don't have to get rid of mine, though. That That's a good life to live in. Yeah, Alex, just walk everywhere. You'll be fine. It's not like I need to go very far anywhere. 
<laughs> uh, so I, I want to close the show here with our Patreon questions. We have a couple here that are you know a, a little bit all over the place. We got a little bit here, a little bit there. Approximate value of licensing agreements with Canon and IGT. Significant or insignificant numbers. Alternative for blend as it appears dead for droid berries. And then how long has desktop BBM been around and why has it never been released? And as well, now that BlackBerry is using Android, is Umi Astowski using a priv? So loaded question. That that was like eight questions. What do you mean loaded question? <laughs> I don't even remember the first one. First one was the approximate, you know, a value of oh, some of these okay. licensing agreements. And I think menial at this point, maybe you know, I expect them to put up similar numbers to what they did last year, so anything that they can add in, ad hoc's 20 million deal, you know, anything they can add in is going to be beneficial for them. It is a royalty deal, potentially, so a lot of those revenues are going to be years out, not necessarily yeah. right here, right now, so probably insignificant at this point, at least per the coming quarter. Alternatives for blend, as it appears dead for droid berries. That's like, I don't even know that's a question, Jeff. That's just harsh. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's just throwing that one at us. Ugh. <laughs> Um, you know, there are not really any good, good alternatives for BlackBerry Blend on Android because it's it's such a BlackBerry thing, I think, right? You have the BBM integration, and yeah. there's there's no APIs or things like that for, for for others to develop on, so it's really hard to replicate Blend well. On it comes a, yeah. down to what what is beneficial or what do you consider the best part of BlackBerry Blend and what do you actually use it for? I mean, yeah. for me... Personally, it's the you know the most of the time that I'm using it is basically it's for uh, you know BBM or anything like that. Like I don't I really don't need my emails on my desktop, given the way that I operate, because my emails are already on my desktop. Um, so for me, the the biggest beneficial part of Blend was actually having BBM there. Yes. And when it comes down to you know replicating that sort of experience, the the biggest I guess. Or I, I guess you can say the closest that you can get to it is is basically with Push Bullet. Um, Push Bullet actually does send your your BBMs to your desktop. However, it's not it's, it's not really yeah it's not really it's not the best sometimes. experience. Like you know I, you, get, I, you get notifications for groups that you're in for BBM, but you can't actually respond to anything that way. Yeah, um, it, it becomes really bothersome, but. Um, you know, if you desperately just simply need BBM on the desktop, it is it is a working solution. You can go ahead and use it. But so I've had an experience though, and I, I found I think I found the culprit is if you get a BBM message and then you start to reply, and then you get another BBM message from the same person, and then you send it, it just doesn't send it. I've yeah. had so there's some there's and it's annoying when you type like a big response out, especially if you're typing it, and it just doesn't even get sent. And the same functionality happens when you're using a quick reply on your phone. So it's and it, you know it just it does not work very well because you can only respond to the last person that BBM'd you. It's not like you can go and see your last three BBM messages. So yeah. it's it, there's it's a really bad solution. Now I'm in a scenario where you know I'm talking to a friend on Hangouts, I'm talking to a different friend on BBM, and I'm talking to a couple other friends on WhatsApp. So you know my day consists of going to my computer opening up inbox, opening up my chat for Hangouts, so I now have this chat on my computer. Now I go to web.whatsapp.com, and then I have my BBM, which I just have to use my phone for. So it's it's just annoying. I wish I had one app that just had allowed me to respond to everyone from it. God, I miss BlackBerry 10. <laughs> well, that, that wasn't necessarily it, but it's more so blend. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the funny thing is, you know, there is an Android client on Android to support Blend on yeah. BlackBerry 10 devices. Yeah. So I wonder, you know, what the leaps and bounds have to be to really make something like that happen. And whether, you know, it is worth being, a, you know, a unique value proposition for them. How long has BlackBerry had desktop BBM, and why has it not been released? <laughs> you know, we, we've heard rumors of a desktop BBM for... Years, upon years... I want to say like almost a decade, like literally almost a decade. Yeah. They're probably it's been using a it like for HQ. Yeah, I mean, you know, internally for use for enterprise. I honestly think that they're they want to move BBM protected to a format that works on desktop so that it can be an enterprise a client for IM. But I think that's you know a ways out, and I really don't think so, that's going to be something we're going to see anytime 
soon. They really need to, again, play it by the numbers and see whether they can grow that, that area of the business for protected. Yeah, and I almost feel like is it even worth it at that point? Because like you have companies like Slack who are just killing it when it comes to you know desktop and phone integration for talking within a company. I can't even imagine choosing the BBM protected route is all company discussion compared to something like Slack at the moment. It's it's it's, it's a it's a totally different clientele. I think they're going yeah. for the security, yeah. the fact that it can be audited, and all of that where. You know, Slack I just may, or may not have some of the same capabilities in terms yeah, of... Yeah, I, I just mean functionality-wise. The, the simple fact that I can't be at a computer and respond to you is just absurd. The fact that I have to go to my cell phone to use BBM Protected. I feel like the number one thing should be get a desktop client so we can... You know, it, your efficiency goes down so much having to talk to people through BBM on your phone as opposed to on a computer if that's Definitely. where you're getting work done. I just feel like it, they're totally missing the mark on that. That's what I feel. Be nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I I kind of agree in terms of missing the market for it. It seems like a missed opportunity because pretty much every other client that you have access to has some sort of desktop component to yeah. it. Like BBM, or sorry, Google Hangouts. You can have Hangouts on your desktop. You can have WhatsApp on your desktop. Uh, you know, it just seems like it seems like the it seems like the thing to do, like you should have that component in place to be able to go ahead and access it, but it's solely been ignored for a long period of time, and there was there was hopes of it with uh, BlackBerry Blend, but now BlackBerry Blend is just basically stuck on BlackBerry 10 with no Android client. And yeah. You kind of need to go all in if you're going to do that because nobody else isn't going all in. Like everybody else is going all in, so... You might as well just do it, but yep. yeah, I don't know. You know, again, it's who's servicing that kind of top level of conversation. It, you know, what are they currently using? Are they using some kind of, you know, Skype for business or or whatever the case may be? I think there's a market there for them. Otherwise, what is protected aside from you know a secure messaging client for mobile phones? I think it needs to be a little bit broader if it wants to stay in their portfolio. And that's something you know, as an add-on with Bez and etc. You know that would make sense as part of their their current software strategy, and in, in the near term, you know, the near er term rather. But I agree. It's by Slack. <laughs> and the thing is, you know, with protected, who's to say you can't integrate those apps into yours and use your secure messaging channel to deliver, you know, kind of in a white label way, and you know, work with some of your competitors in that space to create kind of you know the hub of secure messaging. You know, it, there's there's totally alternatives out there, but they need to start having some conversations with people in the market that matter, because right now they're not in that market, so they don't matter. Uh, we have another question here from Ahmed, who asks, Priv heats up pretty fast. Do you think a software update can fix that? Um, Priv heat is such a funny thing, because it's like the most random, and, I, and it happens so infrequently these days that I don't even... I don't even ever notice it, really. Yeah. Maybe the first two weeks, yeah, I noticed it, but I haven't... Even playing games and things like that, it's been totally fine. Alex, what about you? I mean, when it when it's charging, I guess it gets hot when mine's charging, but I mean, yeah. you know, it's rapid charging. Yeah, that's about you, Alex? true. Do you have any, uh, any heating issues? Definitely when it's charging and using it. Like, not... I mean, like, if you're charging, you're using and doing a bunch of stuff, and... You know, live streaming. Uh, well, not actually live streaming, but just watching, um, watching streams on either Meerkat, which I don't really use whatsoever, but Periscope. Like it definitely starts going kind of nuts within five minutes of that. So there's some there are a couple things that cause it to do it, but otherwise it seems to be all right for the most part. Um, but at the same time, it's also freezing in my house and it's freezing everywhere right now, so it's probably not so fair. Uh, to to base off of that, it keeps it keeps it warm, well cool rather. Someone someone in the comments is like cold in Toronto at the moment. Good feature. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> keeps my hands it's warm. Nice. Yeah, right. I I don't know. I agree with James. It's kind of like totally random and such a weird thing to actually experience because you know I don't think any software update is essentially going to go ahead and fix that because there's no rhyme or reason to what actually causes it. It could be, you know, I, it, if you remember back in the old days, like, I say old days, like I'm old, 
I'm old. I'm so old. <laughs> Alex, when do we go to the moon? <laughs> yeah. 1969. 1990. <laughs> 1999. <laughs> if, you guys, if you guys remember, basically, like, if you ever did any traveling with, like, a Bold 9900 or anything like that, um, I've experienced it numerous amounts of times. Like, if you take your device off of the network that it was intended for, let's use Rogers as an example, and you switch over to AT&T, the BlackBerry Bolt 9900 used to have really bad problems with being able to um, go ahead and basically acclimate to the AT&T network or T-Mobile network. Like, I would get off the plane and register on, on like, AT&T at the airport or whatever, and my device would just totally light on fire. The battery would just basically be drained for absolutely no reason at all. You know, it, it really does come down to, like, the carrier aspect of it all, and I really don't know what causes those kind of situations because you know, it, something in the software, carrier software that, you know, is, is specifically built for them or whatever, I've had numerous amounts of devices that did that scenario throughout the years, especially BlackBerry devices, but, you know, it happens, it happens on iPhones and Androids as well. Uh, I remember when the HTC um, HTC One first came out, like the M7, I think it was. Um, that device used to, uh, it, at least in my experience, when I had it on Rogers, it it would work perfectly fine. But if I slapped it on T-Mobile here in Arizona, it would totally light on fire, and you just wouldn't be able to use it. It'd be so hot, right? So there's so many different aspects to what actually causes a device to heat up that I don't think, you know, maybe. Maybe if you could pinpoint it down to one particular thing, you know, a software update would help, but in the long run, for the mass majority, I don't think any software update is going to go ahead and basically, you know, be the magic button to stop your device from heating up unless it was pinpointed to one specific thing. Like, if they were to if they were to be able to break it down and say, yes, the T-Mobile My Account is causing a problem yeah. on Priv, then yeah, you know, a software update may help with that because, you know, maybe they can improve upon the actual, like, My Account app or whatever. But, you know, in general, a software update isn't going to do very much. Yeah, once Google gets some not crappy apps, we might uh, get, <laughs> get some not uh, heating up ribs. And again, you got to remember this device is doing a little bit more work in the background as well. You know, it is running fully encrypted and... You know, you know, there's other aspects of the device as well that are, you know, continuing to work on that security that's underneath and underpinning the whole system. So all good things to keep in mind there, Ahmed. Last question we had there, is it possible to implement more of the Cascades UI into the Priv? If so, should they? Alex, this is totally up your alley, so I'm going to skate that one over to you from Jeremy. Uh, Cascades Paradigm or the actual, like, I guess the look of it? I don't think necessarily the framework of Cascades, but the UI, you know, the way it looks, the way it functions. Because the material design is, like, almost there, but not quite. You know how they, like, centered thing in the in the, in the BlackBerry Hub and the, the action icon? Things like that. Should they make it more BlackBerry 10 esque I think you need to appeal to your... You need to, like, appreciate the platform that you're on and if they start doing a bunch of apps and do things with the BlackBerry 10 UI that's kind of conflicting with the material design, you know, that doesn't that doesn't help anyone out. I, I, it, it would just make, you know, add inconsistencies and I guess some of the flow, but, like, it's weird, right? Because, like, you swipe from the left side and then you kind of do have that overflow menu. Yeah, the difference is on BlackBerry 10, you could swipe from the left anywhere and then you kind of have the overflow menu, but, like, I, I, I just don't think it, it'd be the smartest thing. We've, we've had this discussion back when they were initially talking about going over to Android and when they made the the, um, BBM, the BBM app for Android and we're like, you know, they should just do material design. They should not try and bring over BlackBerry 10. What was the first BBM app on Android? It, it, was, it was Cascades looking, 100%. And people did not like that. People were like, Material, make it material. They finally made yeah. it material, and people were like, "Thank you for making material." So I think it'd be taking a step in the wrong direction. Yeah, I think it'd be basically, you know, alienating their user base at that point because of the fact that people are buying an Android device. They expect the Android 
experience to a certain extent. And, you know, BlackBerry has come out pretty much thus far to say that they're not going to uh, impede upon the BlackBerry, or sorry, the Android experience as it is. So, you know, if they started to do anything like switching over to a more, you know, quote-unquote cascady UI or anything like that, then basically that's going against what they initially stated in the first place. So yeah. I don't think it's going to happen. And Alex is totally right. When they when they launched BBM, it was, you know, BlackBerry looking and people didn't like it. So they had to go back and re-envision it basically using material design. So, you know, the, the precedent has been set that they're going to go ahead and basically use material design going forward and follow... Google's path uh, versus, you know, trying to recreate the wheel. Yeah. I'm about it. I'm about it. I just hope they can t- continue to keep forward with, you know, software and hardware for mobile devices. I really think it's good for their perception that they keep putting devices out there. I think uh, as well for some of their clients who are questioning their faith in BlackBerry, the hardware stance and the continued pushes is a value add for them. As long as they can break even or, or make some money from it, for sure. But you know, John Chen's not going to allow this to 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 underserve them much longer. That's for sure. So I, yeah. I hope his patience is a little bit a little bit stronger than I than it might be. But uh, we will certainly see where things go. Uh, again, a big thank you to our patrons for those questions. Your shirts are in route if you've hit your pledge tier already. Um, I don't know how Blaze and Alex got one, but hey, they got one somehow somehow magically. <laughs> Alex is mad because Alex. I was mad because I gave Blaze more stickers than him. He was like, very <laughs> upset about this. He's the editor in chief at Crackberry. You're. I'm um, Alex Bass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I want to close this podcast, and we'll hop in our after show um, here briefly. But Deadpool. Close... Yeah, with Deadpool. Uh, Tom over at U Carbons sent us some awesome. Uh, Skins for BlackBerry devices. I have two for Priv and one for the BlackBerry Passport. So I've got one in blue. I've got one in this kind of like dark wood material, which looks really nice. And as well, I have one for the Priv in red. So all you need to do to enter this contest is leave a comment on the BerryFlow upstream post on CrackBerry or on BerryFlow, wherever. We're going to check the comments on both, saying which color for which device you want, and we will choose a winner come next week. So let it be known. The contest is out there. Anyone who watching or anyone who hears about this is, is willing and uh, available to enter. Am I going to uh, be eligible yet? Um, uh, I'm going to say no. <laughs> what do you mean yet? What do you mean yet? Because you've never, every giveaway so far, you haven't let me be eligible. So. <laughs> yeah. You're not eligible. Eventually, eventually You're not yes, eligible. Yeah. You're not eligible. The patrons just bought you a shirt, and now you want to <laughs> take, their, take the, the potential for them to get skins too? Okay. I thought you liked your device naked, Alex. Make up your mind, man. I do, but I'd consider looking at it. I don't know if I'd put it on, but I'd look at it. I mean, put an amendment in here. <laughs> Let me put an amendment here. Only enter the contest if you genuinely have an interest or need for one of these things. Yeah, I think that's... <laughs> yeah. So, Alex, there you go. You can't, can't end now I'm out. Now I... Thank you. It's at least <laughs> a legitimate finish. reason. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. We will catch... The rest of you on our upstream after show, and the rest we will catch next week. Take it easy, guys. Peace. Later.